Good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing fantastically well. It is Connor here, and we are back with another rumor mill. Listen, before we start the video, guys, if you wouldn't mind going below, hitting the link, and voting for one Leeds fan channel at the Football Content Awards, it would mean the world to me. Listen, I'm trying to pump out as much content as I can. I'm a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm a lone rider as well, so if you wouldn't mind helping me out, I need as much uh, as I can get, to be quite honest with you. We're up for best new content creator and best club content creator. So go down below, hit the link in the description, I'll put it there, and vote for one Leeds fan channel so the army can get an award. So, Crew Alexandra, last night, put a video out. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. I did a review from Ellen Road after the game. My thoughts on it overall slightly worrying just in terms of listen that everyone will see the final result and go whoa and that's what football fans tend to do it's you know Leeds won 3-0 this that and the other but I still think during the game there was a few worrying signs you know we had a strong 11 out a really really strong 11 out and we didn't really create anything massively in the first sort of 50 60 minutes and every single side has top players who come on and change the game you know we have Rafinha, Bamford, who, who who naturally will change the game. But I, I just thought with that team out last night, Roberts, Costa, Harrison, Rodrigo, Forshaw, Phillips, Firpo, you know, Urente, Strout, Melier, that is a strong team against third bottom of, uh, of division. Well, sorry, what is it now? League two, League one that might be in. Sorry, apologies, crew fans. League one, I believe it is. They should be getting the job done, really. And when you see Norwich scoring six against Bournemouth and Villa 4-0 up at half time, I think it was just a little bit worrying. The artillery came on, the big boys came on, but I didn't really want them to come on. You know, you want them fresh first and ready for the game at the weekend against a, which is what is going to be a very physical Burnley game. So, listen, we got the job done. I thought Jack Harrison, as I said last night, was superb. You know, individually, he just carried the mantle. Uh, he really did, you know, not having Rafinha in the side, and we'll get onto that in a little bit, but not having Rafinha in the side was huge. But Jack Harrison really took it upon himself to to take that mantle and be that be that man uh, from the start, and I thought it was fabulous. Some of his crossing to be desired, as, as I always say with Jack Harrison, but his individual touches, his, his silky bit of play, his defensive work as well was fabulous last night. You know, there was one time where the, their fullback, I believe it was called Ramsey, was charging up and then Jack Harrison got all the way back. It was fa fantastic in that department as well and he really is key for Leeds. Firpo, he's got a long way to go, I think. He's got a long way to go. It's the, the overlaps that you used to see from Alioski consistently. And you can see Jack Harrison looking for the overlaps consistently. And there was a couple of times where it happened yesterday, but he seems to be a little bit nervy, I'll be honest. He seems to be a bit reserved, a little bit nervy. We've got to give him time, of course, Rab. He's going to be moulded into that position. He's going to have to adapt, to be quite honest with you. But he does seem very, very nervy to bomb forward. And I wonder if he's been told that by Bielsa to stay back and, and you know, allow the other side, the, the, the right-hand side, to bomb on forward. But you did see a lot of Alioski bombing on forward last year. But maybe we're, we're, we're moving into a more defensive standpoint where he wants the left-hand side to be a little bit more reserved. I don't know, and I doubt that as well. But Junior was okay. He was okay. But you are expecting more, especially against that sort of calibre of opposition. So we'll, we'll wait for him to have a couple more games under his belt. Really happy with Forshaw. Forshaw got a couple of, you know, 45 minutes under his belt, which was fantastic to see. Um, might have been a bit more. Yeah, it was more than 45 minutes, actually. And he looked fit. He looked fine. Running around, perfect. You know, knocking the ball around nicely. Urente was unbelievable. His passes out from the back. We missed that so much. He fizzes balls into the midfield and asks the midfield, go on, what can you do? What can you do with that? I'm going to ask that question of you. Always looking to go forward. Really, really impressive tonight. It looks like he's going to be starting against Burnley, which having that mainstay of Phillips and Urente is key. But I just wanted to touch on Rafinha. It's the creativity department and the reliance on him. And it's just a me message to the board generally. We just have to get some more bodies going forward. And we're going to get on some rumours in just a little bit. But bodies even just in the attacking capacity. We don't even have to get a winger. But just something a little bit different that we can have in that front four. That Leeds going to be able to call on. And we'll, we'll just get onto a couple of rumours in a little bit. But yeah, Leeds were, were struggling really to do anything. That, I mean, that first half was 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 poor really. Really, really poor for, for a strong Leeds United side. And it does cry out for room, uh, uh, sorry, rumours. Yeah, <laughs> transfers. Um I personally think, and yeah, if 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 you look at our wing options, and if Rafinha is out for a period of time, if he is out for seven or eight weeks, Leeds are going to struggle. We're going to really, really, really struggle. And if you're denying that, 
fair play, but I, I, I don't understand how you can, you know, unless Leeds get another winger who's going to be coming in, who's going to do a decent job. But Helder Costa really struggled last night again, um, making the right back and the left back looking very look very good. He was okay in bits, but just no conviction at all, and no confidence and no strength. So yeah, so that that brings me on to the first rumour of the day anyway. Leeds are exploring the American option, Captain America, Daryl DK, looking for a powerful striker. He doesn't really fit the Leeds mould, but what we saw with Gelhard is maybe a little bit of a flick of the switch in terms of Leeds United going for powerful centre forwards. DK is a monster. As, as you guys know, I, I watched Barnsley quite a bit um, and I watched a lot of Daryl DK last season. What did Bamford get in the Championship? 13 goals, 14 goals was it? DK got 10 goals in 19 matches, signed in January, was unbelievable for Barnsley. They play a different style of football, of course, to do, but he was neat and tidy on the fo- on the, on the the ground, physical, um, a, a big grafter, a big grafter. And if you guys remember, I did say last season that someone like DK would be perfect. And a lot of people are like, oh, he's championship. Well, we were championship once. Yeah, that happens. You know, then you evolve. Absolutely fabulous player. I can't believe no one's gone in from apparently it's looking like Ishmael, uh, Val- Valerian Ishmael at West Bromwich Albion wants to have a bit of a reunion with him um, and bring him in. But Leeds United, with the 49ers enterprise, are exploring their options. And Daryl DK apparently is on the shortlist, which would, would be great to see. Leo Kjelda looks like that's going to be wrapped up uh, after a, after Celtic update. He was left out of the, uh, the Europa League squad this week and, and obviously that's going to be a signal that he's going to be moving on and coming to Leeds United, which is going to be great to see for our youth development once again, bolstering that bolstering that academy which you know we've seen this this year is going to be probably the inclusion on, on in the first team squad of Chrysensio Somerville, Greenwood, Drame and, and of course Joey Gelhard so yeah that two-year plan is always great and, and hopefully we'll look to see Leo Hjelda in the first team very very soon. There's a couple of bits as well that pundits are talking about Leeds' central midfield options and, and having Calvin Phillips cover and this is what we've spoken about at the, at, at the start I'm not going to go into what specific pundits have said but it's a bit of a risk, isn't it? And it's just harking back to what I was talking about before. It's not to be negative, it's just to be proactive. I think, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, the business is done and this, that and the other. But I think it is key that Leeds get bodies in. I think you lot agree with that as well. Um, I think it is key. You just saw last night that even when Leeds were fully rotated, there is a lack of impetus. And, and you do think even if Calvin Phillips wasn't in that starting lineup last night, there'd have been a couple of breakouts through central midfield from their players. They had a, a lad in midfield called Knight who was busy, but Calvin had his number. But if you take Phillips out of that lineup, if he is injured, and we know Calvin gets injured throughout the season, that's going to be a problem. But I think the biggest problem is Rafinha. It's going to be the, he's the biggest problem. You, you, you sort of think to yourself, it is, it's, it's all about Calvin. If Calvin's not there, then it, then it changes. But I do think he's the big problem, Rafinha. And you saw a lot of that last night. Obviously, we brought the big, big guns on. I thought Bamford was fabulous when he came on. He's so underrated in this Leeds system. But without that creative spark, that X factor, Leeds were struggling even last night. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do Leeds have to get something done? What do you think on what I've said? Don't feel like I've been harsh. 3-0 altogether. Fantastic result. But it is crew, so you'd expect it. I mean, I predicted, what, 5-1 at the start of proceedings. So so my predictions were very high yesterday. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. We'll obviously have some Burnley preamble coming up. If you want to sign up to the Patreon, we've got a Burnley writer who's coming on the channel to discuss everything Burnley. It's a really, really insightful chat. Talks about Leeds, and obviously this guy works for a very reputable uh, newspaper, so make sure you you tune in on that. On the Patreon, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be getting loads of opposition previews from really decent calibre journalists as well, so make sure you tune in for that one. For a little bit of a different perspective and a more analytical perspective, you'll probably hear a few journalists on there who you've seen before. Guys, I'll catch you in a bit. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in a bit.